Hi there, you're listening to Chris Gordon on Hellblazer.biz. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening or good night listeners, wherever you may be in the world right now. Well, tonight I might have to call you Sassanax. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in because I appreciate all your support as always. Today I am proud to bring to you someone who is active online and who, in a very rare instance, ensures he follows everyone back, which is no mean feat when you've got 30,000 followers. He is no stranger to either treading the boards or being on the big screen or the small screen. And the latter has actually seen him being a soldier, a gangster, and more so for this interview, a Highlander. Today, I am proud to bring to you the illustrious Ross from Outlander, Scott Kyle. Sing me a song of a lass that is gone. Say, could that lass be I? Mary of soul, she sailed on a day over the sea to sky. Billow and breeze, islands and seas, mountains of rain and sun. All that was good, all that was fair, all that was me is gone. Good evening, Scott. How are you? Good evening, Chris. I'm very well, thank you. I'm, I'm sitting here in the Bathgate Regal office doing a wee interview with you. So, <laughs> Well, you couldn't get much better than that, could you? I'm sat in my little office as well, my little study with a drum kit next to me and flowers behind, so you've got a nice scenic thing to look at. <laughs> nice, and the, the wonders of technology means we're connecting. Wonderful. It does, yeah. And we're not that far away, to be fair. I'm only in North Wales. Oh, well, that, well, that's a five-minute walk if I run, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's still a fair way from Glasgow, but at least it's yeah, not as far as the are. states. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've driven there a couple of times. Whew. Long drive. Excellent. So, as you know, I've got some questions for you, and um, just to go over the, some general questions. And we've had some fans have sent questions in, which I know you've seen because Twitter went ballistic when uh, <laughs> when, <laughs> when I invited you on. Uh, I've got to say, I think I've had six thousand impressions from that tweet where I wow. said ask ask for questions for you. Which is that's a pretty, a pretty big deal. Yeah, that's pretty is, big yeah. deal. <laughs> After you shared it, it went ballistic. <laughs> I think we're mess we're messing up the plan. My my tiny part in Outlander was not supposed to result in thirty thousand followers. That was not <laughs> the plan. Nobody seen that coming, least me. Yeah. Least of all. <laughs> That's pretty impressive to be fair. I, mean, I think I was in say my twenty lines or so and get the hell out of there and, and, and not disturb <laughs> anybody. And uh, and it's kinda exploded on me. So <laughs> Mm. It has, it's gone ballistic. And what's more impressive is something I've already mentioned in the introduction, is the fact that you follow back every single one. Now that's very rare, and that's really impressive, <laughs> and something that everyone, all the fans, love you for. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a strange one. I was kind of new to Twitter, and uh, I remember I actually helped Stephen Walters set up his Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he was asking me about it, and I, I helped him set up his Twitter. And, uh, and I kind of said to him, this is what you should be doing. You, you'll get followers, and you'll follow back kind of famous people. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I when I when I he said to me, Are you know on Twitter? And I said, No, I'm not. He says, You should go on it as well then. Mm. And I was like, Well, nobody's really interested in me, Stephen. Do you know what I mean? Nobody knows who I am or anything. <laughs> so I set up the Twitter anyway. And I think Stephen's one of my first followers. Right. Um, and I just I just followed people back as they thought. I thought, Oh, that's nice. That person's followed me. I follow them back. Mm-hmm. And that's that's been my that's been my <laughs> method. And here we are, thirty thousand odd later. And it, it's mad that people are saying, "Oh, wow, it's really kind of you to follow back." And I'm saying, if you walked into the foyer of the theatre that I work in and said hello, I would say hello back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I see it. It's like I, I work in the entertainment industry in terms of the theatre here. So mm. uh, I know that the audience for the theatre shows are very very important to the theatre. We wouldn't yeah. be here without them. And uh, and I think I just take that on the Twitter that. Without without the fans supporting the show, that there wouldn't be a show. So, uh, you know, of course, I'm delighted. To, and if people are interested in what I'm doing, then um, I'm interested in them. You know, so fair happy enough, days. Fair enough. <laughs> That's a it's a nice thing to hear as well, actually, because I know mm-hmm. that, I mean, not most of the people I speak to say the same thing, and it's you know, it's nice to hear that that there's so much passion from you guys for the fans as well as everyone else, because you know, with that, if people don't watch things in the TV shows like Outlander or anything like that, then tr- it's true they they won't get picked up and they won't be so successful. Um, 
but it's, it's lovely when we get interaction back from you guys who are the cast members as well and there's quite a few Outlander's is very good like that as well I think you're very interactive with all the fans oh um, I mean Steve, Stephen Waters has made these videos and stuff like that you know he, he's got a real talent he makes a music <laughs> video I can't do that <laughs> I can't do a music video he's, he's got he's got a real talent uh, I, I need to rely on kind of funny videos and, and daft stories and, and signings and stuff like that <laughs> well, that's still fair enough it's still, still, still good enough <laughs> But yeah, when they get creative like Stephen, then yeah. It's a... <laughs> yeah, I, I always say to folk that when you go to like a house party, you know, if you go to a house party and there's, you go, they're there with different actors, there's always like somebody with a guitar, you know, that's really cool and they can play the <laughs> yeah. guitar. And there's somebody up there that can cook all the food, you know, that's their gift, uh-huh. they're really good at that. And there's somebody that's mixing the cocktails and making you up strange concoctions you'd never dreamed of, right? Mm. Somebody else in the corner telling the funniest story you've ever heard in your life. I'm the guy that, I take out the rubbish. That's my, my talent. I'll take out the rubbish, right? I'll clean up. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you mention that. Have you, uh, do you know Matt Ryan? Matt Ryan uh, or John Joe O'Neill? They're, well, John Joe might do because he's quite, they're all Shakespeare and, so right, Matt, but I, don't, in con- I don't know them. I've not worked with them. Yeah, they're they're in constant. But I I spoke to those two together. They were roommates, and it's exactly what you just said. They're both guitar players. They both sit, and you know, it's just exactly. You, you get put people together, and they've all got the different talents. So yeah, though, um, people ended up saying that just sounded like three bla- three mates chatting in a pub. Because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just it just turned into a debacle of hilarity and. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. it. it. When you get uh, when you get big personalities together, um, everybody's talent kind of shines. As I say, on the set of Outlander, you got different different uh, people. Like Graham uh, Graham McTavish is a yeah. wonderful storyteller. Mm-hmm. Um, so it tends to be when Graham's about, everybody's listening, and he's telling some fantastic stories. Do you know what I mean? That's that's yeah. kind of how it works. Everybody's got a gift. <laughs> Excellent. I actually wanted him on my show. He follows me, and uh, he did say he would. Uh, last year, but his, his schedule got so hectic as well. I yeah, think. he's a lot more busier than me. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean yeah, it like that. I think he was working on Rambo and he was doing The Hobbit. You know, he was doing different yeah, he was things. doing everything, so, wasn't he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, so yeah, it's, um, but it's great. It's brilliant. And yeah, the interaction, I think, from you guys from Outlander, again, it's something that you see on some shows, but not all, that this, the interaction helps the fans um, relate more to the show and relate mm-hmm. more to to what's going on and and it it, it just brings it like a close-knit family and that's what the fandom is like it's the same with another show i did last year constantine which matt was in and it was it was Mm -hmm. very much very the relationship between the cast and the fans it was very much a symbiotic relationship as you've already mentioned Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. outlander is definitely that kind of show from what i've what i've seen myself yeah i mean the the, the amazing thing for me has been like my mum's on twitter and on facebook you know my mum (laughs) Yeah. And she's chatting away everybody, and she's putting up some, you know, daft, embarrassing pictures of me as a kid in the school play, or all these daft things. And uh, <laughs> and my mum's meeting friends out of it. You know what I mean? And that's that's the reality. Yeah. Obviously, that obviously people are enjoying the show, but the fandom thing is is building real long lasting friendships. And mm-hmm. some of them come over here. This year, we we did a Highlander fling event at the theatre that I work at. Yeah. And it was to raise money for the theatre first and foremost, but it was a gathering of of some like minded, really nice folk. And, uh, and there was people trying, flying from all over the world. Wow. Meet friends that they'd met online. You know, there's people yeah. coming you know, from down south, people coming from America, people coming from Canada. And these are all people that know each other online, but they were meeting each other at the Regal Theatre for the first time. <laughs> so it, it was really cool. You know, it was a really yeah. exciting thing, a really nice thing to see. Whereas uh, it's sometimes, the you know, as much as people maybe see the, the, the acts on the stage, sometimes you, you don't see the fandom, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm, yeah. Somebody in the office there. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that makes total sense, and uh, that is pretty awesome coming from all you know, <laughs> coming from all yeah. The, I mean, well, we the had, we, I I got a survey done. One of the 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 board members done a survey of of the addresses and where mm-hmm. people were from, yeah. and fifty percent of the people that came were kind of USA and Canada. Do you know what I mean wow. of, of at the night? You know what I mean the, uh, yeah. of, of the percentage of folk there, and some of the other ones were maybe from down south, England, Wales, different places. So mm-hmm. a real international crowd came to to the Regal Theatre in Bathgate, which is a wee town <laughs> in, in West Lothian. You know, I mean yeah. the, the only thing that people associate with West Lothian and, and, and Bathgate is Susan Boyle. You know, right, yeah. Susan, you... Susan mentioned the place on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> I think a few people googled it. Yeah, and found out where it was. But what a mm. what a great thing to have though, and what a great. Um, Selling point for Bathgate as well, just to have everyone come and visit. 
And yeah, I mean, it was a real buzz in the town. The local restaurants did well, the local hotels. So uh, the event that we held was raising funds for the Regal, but it actually gave the local economy a boost mm -hmm. as well. So, yeah, it was phenomenal. And the nicest thing as well was the people that have left have already bought tickets for next year. So they've had a good time. You know what I mean? Yeah. That most thing they've came along and had a wonderful time and they want to come back for more next year Brilliant. So i was about to ask that i say you know they're going to plan a reunion and do it and make it a yearly thing <laughs> yeah that would be absolutely amazing and we were lucky this year that stephen walters from outlander who plays angus yeah. he came along um and uh, and you know he was signing autographs and chatting away to folk and people kept saying it was really nice to get to spend time with the guys because i think sometimes when they go to the bigger conventions they mm -hmm. don't get a lot of time to meet folk no, no, yeah. you were literally in the room we're all having a party together you know so you can <laughs> a chat and everything so it's all good yeah that's i think that's the thing about comic con we'll get on to the questions in a minute <laughs> i think that's the thing about comic cons is they are so big and there's so many people i mean there's a local one here wales comic con which you'll have to come to i'll put you in touch with the guy <laughs> i was going to say that you, you 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 get me invited then yeah <laughs> it's a crack I, I go to the opening of an envelope of the invitement you know <laughs> it is a cracking they do two a year two they've started this year doing two days one in april and two days in april two days in november um, but they've normally only done it one day and it is an amazing show it's a family show there's you know and it's it's nice it's, I always go there but I've been to other ones and I just couldn't cope because it was just so yeah, busy so busy and like so many people want to meet, meet folk you know exactly kinda... yeah people, and like you say people come from all over the world for the bigger conventions yeah. and I mean people do for Wales Comic Con but it's not it's the atmosphere of cosplay and everything is just so different mm -hmm. there it just mm -hmm. makes it a very special one so uh, uh I'm not getting any kudos or any selling points for mentioning yeah. them. <laughs> no, it's a good one. I'll put you in touch with uh, Jamie good uh, man. for that one. Uh, but it'll be good to see you down here. If it will, if I'm invited, I'll be there. <laughs> uh, Graham's been before, actually. Graham yeah. gets about. I, I don't know much about the Comic Con things, but uh, most of the guys on set, when when they were get, maybe getting invited, they were asking Graham's advice because I think he's been on the circuit a lot longer than he's been most on of the few folks, of them. So. Yeah, from the Hobbit and stuff, he does a lot with yeah. the Hobbit. Yeah, he's done a lot. Yeah, it's through um, one of the Hobbit guys. I got in touch with Graham actually, uh, Jed Brophy, one of his Hobbit friends, uh, one of his dwarfs friends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Right, so we'll get on to the questions now. <laughs> right, well, you better do your job. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is my job, getting it all out of you, just having a nice relaxed <laughs> ramble, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> luring me in. It is, yeah, luring you in, and then uh, making you relaxed, and then we can... Mm. <laughs> we're in. So what kind of made you decide to get into acting in the first place? How long have you been in involved? Um, I've always enjoyed storytelling, and uh, I, I take it back to in primary school and, and you know, kind of, um, and, and in high school, being the mm. class clown, you know, liking to tell a story or two, yeah. and that continued when I played in the, in the football or the soccer team. If there's American listeners, <laughs> uh, I used to play in my my, my local team, and uh, I was always kind of the joker, you know, kind of yeah. in the team. And um, and I, I was I was basically working in a supermarket, and my wife said to me, "Why don't you go to college and do something mm -hmm. that you enjoy doing?" Um, and uh, yeah, and I, and I I went and auditioned for an acting course. All um, right, cool. And uh, yep, did three years at college doing that. I graduated. I set up a theatre company. Uh, we toured the country. We did really well. We got lucky. We picked a, a big show, um, mm -hmm. or we picked a, a, a nothing show and made it a big show. Right. Uh, and then I, I was uh, I was touring, and I came across the Regal Theatre. Mm -hmm. um, and they were talking about shutting it down, and uh, yeah. and I got involved five years ago, and and we're still here. <laughs> so yeah, that's that, that's the kind of the short answer of it. So I I do as much acting work as I can, as and when I get the opportunity. But um, my big passion, I love, is working in this theatre and making sure it's here for future generations. Fair enough. That sounds great. Um, it's good that you've been so passionate as well. It's something. I mean, I've people bored of hearing it now because I'm sure I've said it so many times I used to love acting when I was in school at A level and GCSE but it stopped there I was invited to do Lambda um, at one point mm -hmm. but my parents in the best interest and love them to bits and will never change it decided to steer me in a different career in a more stable career yeah that's career. probably a good move <laughs> I know an awful lot of unemployed great actors out there that are working so do I now <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah they, they sort of moved that way and it, I, I, I let it go but I started to get back into it myself now and it's and never too late never no, too late no that's no. what I thought I actually filmed my first fil my first scene I did theatre I played a pantomime dame at university as well which was oh no you'll know <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be one of the best best things I ever did um, was that but yeah I filmed a, there's an independent film was up here being done recently and uh, I got a part in there it was a featured extra so I got 15-20 lines I'm quite integral 
Wow. It was a nasty character. That, that's so... about the size of my role in Outlander. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, see? I could be an Outlander. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No problem at all. <laughs> you just go and get the horses when they tell you. Just go yeah. and get the horses, Ross. Yeah, I'll go and get the horses. No bother. <laughs>